I actually talked with Martin in 2021 about the Imperial album. And of course, that time we talked a lot about pandemic, but that's of course in the past. But from uh, what kind of uh, ideas and starting point did you start working on Memorial and when did this happen? Well, it just basically started uh, during the pandemic, the, the the writing of the memorial. I think it was sort of what triggered the album was was you know this this whole thing not being able to tour. We weren't able to tour, and then when we actually were able to tour, it was such a great feeling. So I think that affected a lot, you know, the vibe in the album that we really wanted it to be alive album that's that's probably why it's uh pretty powerful and and heavy you know because you know we we just know that it's going to be a a great thing to perform live because pandemic taught us a lot about how you know when when someone takes away your possibility to play for an audience you realize how much you miss it and we did on top of the vibe, did something else change? I mean, did the time change something in the way you write and record music on this album? Well, it gave us a little bit more time, of course. You have to, you have to say, of course. Like we had, thank, thanks to the pandemic, in a way, we had more time to, to, to sit down and work. And I mean, it's, 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 of course, like, like. If it wasn't for the pandemic, then there would be no Atlantis. Because the Atlantis album, it was something that we have always wanted to do, but we never had time to do. You know, rearrange the songs, make something different, make something like more acoustic or more, uh, you know, with, with strings. You know, there was no time for it. But but when the pandemic came, it was just uh, this fantastic golden opportunity for us to 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 do to sit down and rearrange the songs and and you know it made sense to do like a live stream of, of the event and all that thing. so i i don't i don't i don't want to say that the pandemic was good because it was horrible but it turned out to some good stuff at least thankfully talking about atlantis well first of all what is your view or attitude towards live albums in general uh well i love them because, you know, as a musician, I always want to see other musicians play live and I want to hear, hear how they sound live. So I love live albums you know, myself. Um, you know, that's the only way you really get the vibe from the musicians and from the artist. You know? um, so, so it's, 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 a, it's a very good thing. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, but everything has its thing, you know, like studio albums is also great. You know, it's, a, I see in many ways, I, I see live performances and studio albums as two separate things. They, I like when they sound similar, but to achieve that, you, you have to be really working in different, in, in, in very unexpected ways to achieve that kind of feeling that you want. What kind of experience was Atlantis for you? You mentioned the rearranging of the songs and so on. The whole arrangement, I have to say Lars is like a super, I, he needs a lot of credit because, you know, he has a very good musical academic background here. So he wrote all the string arrangements for the, for the, for the strings and, um, and it was, very very nice experience to feel to see that the songs were holding up in a different shape you know in a totally different shape and it was also a lot of fun to bring in all these extra musicians and to spend time with them and uh, get to know them and see see how they were uh, how they were and to interact with other musicians it's also something that we really have appreciated now when we tour because we have been touring on the Atlantis show a little bit. And it's so great when you have other musicians that you meet and you see what they are about. You know? For example, this fantastic um, 
violinist in Finland, uh, Maya. Uh, just like one of the best I've heard. It's just incredible. Going back to Memorial, uh, I read that it's to be experienced as a journey. Could you tell us a bit about the kind of journey these 10 songs are? Mm. Who is, is made, it might be Martin's words, right? <laughs> journey. Could be a journey. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't think of it as a journey. I think it was more as a reflection of the times today that you know we have it's it's a dark album and it it's quite reflected in the darker times uh, that we have russia's invasion of ukraine um climate crisis populist leaders are like popping up everywhere in europe um that's that kind of outlook is a lot of the inspirations for the for the songs in, in memorial. Uh, so it's more like that than a journey, I think. Which of the ten songs uh, uh, would uh, reflect that? Could you like uh, give us a bit of a background story for one song? I don't know. It's it's very different. But um, memorial, for example, is I would say. Is a song about uh, post-traumatic disorder in in in, uh, in conflicts and war situations. So it's a little bit the theme is a little bit like what war does not physically to you, but how it harms your soul. You know what it does to you and your mind in a bit, and that's also. A little bit of the theme maybe in violence, you know, violence, it's it's not about necessarily about physical violence. It's it's also it's also touching the topic of how very, very subtle violence meant it can be psychological violence and how that affects you and how that it, it can break people down or even the threat of violence, how that can sort of break a person down. Um, so we, we work a lot with this. I don't with these themes in our songs on Memorial, you know, like how they affect you. This this kind of sort of like in the indirect effects of conflicts and violence. How do you see the future of Soan at the moment? Is the next album already scheduled for 2025 or <laughs> what's the five year plan? <laughs> Uh, I just see, I see the future like, you know, I just see that the band is in a very good shape at the moment. You know, we're very happy. We like each other and we're having fun. And, uh, you know, like, I think Memorial is sort of like this, it's the best album we have made. Uh, and so there's... It's just for the band. It's a very good outlook, you know. We're we're just very we feel motivated and creative, and and so there's a large chance that there will be more albums. We've been talking about Atlantis and Memorial, of course. But if we could take a bit of a look in the past too, what are kind of the first things that come to mind when you think the times of uh, cognitive around 2012? You know what? The first thing that comes to my mind is Steve DiGiorgio sleeping on my sofa. <laughs> we had, we didn't, you know, we were, a, we were a very, uh, a newcomer band. Obviously didn't have any money. We were poor. And uh, we flew in Steve DiGiorgio from USA. Uh, and uh, he had to crash on my sofa, you know. And he's a pretty tall guy, you know, and he, he he couldn't even get his feet, you know, in the sofa. He had to have has his feet on on uh, on the side of the sofa, <laughs> and that just speaks. I would say that just tells everything about that guy because he was already, of course, he was like a very famous bass player already when he was working with us, and still with this big big heart for music, 
and big big heart for you know this for for this you know how humble he was you know imagine you know it's not many people that would do that go to another side of the world and help them out you know playing you know play instrument on, on an album that is totally unknown when you are yourself are like this famous guy you know that's that's one memory i have and then there's cognitive was a struggle there was a lot of work you know it's, i don't want, even want to speak about the first gig we had in helsinki it's uh it's the worst gig we have ever had we were terribly bad i'm so glad we're not there anymore but did you know that it's first the first gig was actually in helsinki I, we were we were signed to Spine Farm, and Spine Farm was like a Finnish label, and then so it was natural for them for them to invite us to Helsinki uh, to to do our premiere gig. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm glad we don't have any recordings from that. <laughs> so when was the first good gigs that you like? You knew that okay, this works. I think um, the first support tour we did with Paradise Lost uh, was was the, the the first time I felt that things were coming together, and that was actually during the cognitive era. Uh, so, so I think until then, I don't know if that was like one year after or something. Uh, and then the band really started to to work, you know. As a, I mean, we were playing well. Um, but it's it has been like a long journey it's it's a uh, i i think people should realize that especially young bands you know that someone was not sounding like we do today uh during uh, our first year it has took taking us like fucking 12 years to get to the point where we are now it's a hard work <laughs> <laughs> 